Hey everybody, welcome to A New Thing with Cindy. I am Cindy Galley, I'm the host of this show. It's a podcast, it's a video podcast, but nevertheless, I'm so glad to be with you and I'm so glad that you're with us today. I have an incredible guest that's gonna be coming on the show and we have some wonderful things to talk about. So in case y'all didn't know, some wonderful things have been happening and transpiring, but I have to say of all of the different things that are going on, one of the things that I celebrate and look forward to in the month of March is celebrating women all month long. You know, we've come through so much, we've come so far and yet there is still so much more <laughs> for us to do and i'm excited though like this is the year so women put your seat belts on uh whatever it is that you've been sensing like this is time i'm agreeing with you this is time we have been praying and we believe with you for those things that's what this show is all about a new thing with cindy is based on isaiah 43 which says behold the lord says behold i will do a new thing in you and sometimes we're so used to the mundane or sometimes we're just so used to the uh just the system of things that we fight or we resist that new thing that God wants to do in our life. And I'm saying no more. Now is the time. There's so many wonderful things that await for you. And you just have to take that next step. You have to take that next step. And so uh, I'm excited. So for those of you that are in the area, I wanted to invite you personally, this upcoming April, we have what's called Girls Night Out. It's going to be a fun time in Anaheim, California at the church called The Rock. And you can go visit the website, go to therock.com. And it's Girls Night Out. And it's going to be a time where we talk about real things, relationships, love, romance, and everything in between. So it'll be my co-author, Yvette Osborne and I, we are the co-authors of a book that we just released this past December. It's still new called Don't Be This Girl. Our book hit the charts. It became the number one new release in the mate seeking genre on Amazon. And so we're so excited. We're getting such great feedback of how this book is uh, impacting lives. I'm getting constant texts, constant DMs, and I'm saying, oh my goodness, this just makes me so happy, makes makes my heart. And I know that it, it makes Yvette's heart so happy as well. So if you're in the area, come and join us. There'll be a book signing, but also uh, it's not just going to be Yvette and myself, but it will also be Pastor Kimberly Dearman, Pastor Terry McCauley, Pastor Marlene Dearman, and dear friend, Christy Mireles. And she's been a guest on the show. So so has Kimberly. We'll have some giveaways. There's going to be some fun photo booth things going on. We have live music as well from musical artist Ariel, who is incredibly gifted, anointed, and guitarist and singer, songwriter. Girls, it's just going to be a fun time. <laughs> You're not going to want to miss this. So get your friends. Hey, and also it's free. <laughs> it's free because we just, we love pouring into women. And so I'm just so excited that I can announce that today and let you know that April 5th, save the date and go to therock.com. Just keep on the lookout until there's a place that'll give you to register, then go ahead and register, but it's free. It's a free event. Ready for real talk on love, romance, relationships, plus unforgettable fun. It's our very own Girls' Night Out here at The Rock Anaheim with Kimberly Dearman, Terry McCauley, Marlene Dearman, and the authors of Don't Be This Girl, Cindy Galley, and Yvette Osborne. Ladies of all ages from high school and up are welcome. Join us for shopping, photos, giveaways, book signing, and more. Save the date Friday, April 5th at 7 p.m. for a memorable night of fun. And so that's one thing. And then the next thing that we have will be also in the month of April, but it's at the very end of April. And for those of you who love the state of California, such as myself, I'm inviting you all to join us. It's a time where we're going to be honoring women, uh, distinguished women in the state of California for doing incredible things, everything from education and nonprofit to media, government. And it's just going to be a beautiful time. It'll be at the Nixon Library, Saturday, April 27th. And so you can get more information by heading on over to She Leads California. 
Com, you'll see the event. And listen, for those of you that are prayer warriors, every Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m., California, Pacific Coast time, we pray for the state of California. We all come on Zoom. We're all, the cameras are off, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Cameras are off, <laughs> but we pray for the state of California for a half an hour and we cover different things. We pray for our governor. We pray for uh, our legislative government. We pray for the kids, for the youth, for the ministries, for the church, just for the people that there'd be revival in the land, that there would be breakthrough. How many of you know that people struggle with stuff? addiction and just things that are binding them. And some people are in horrific situations, even dangerous situations. And so we pray for every person in the state of California and we pray the word of God. And it really is a powerful and precious time. By the time we're done, you're just, you're wide awake. So uh, also you can visit sheleadscalifornia.com and then click on the tab that says she praise and share it. If you're a woman of faith and you live in California, even if you don't, sometimes I invite my mom, like, mom, come on, pray with us. She's two hours ahead. But she was born in California and she still has a lot of relatives out here, including me. <laughs> so uh, come on, visit SheLeadsCalifornia.com. Join us on the 27th. Uh, if there is a cost to attend, but it will be a beautiful honoring event where we really honor women. This is the time. It's one of the things that I love. We are called to champion and honor each other. None of this competition, none of this being catty. I said it the other day, and I don't remember if I was on a podcast or what, but I just remember saying the days of Mean Girls are over. Like, yes, there's a musical. And yes, once a year, there is that show, the movie that everybody loves to watch over and over again. But the days of Mean Girls are done. Nobody likes Mean Girls. Nobody. So if you're a mean girl, time to jump out of that club and let's say, hey, let me work on myself. There's some issues that I've got going on here that need to be fixed because nobody likes a mean girl and you want to sow the good stuff. You want to sow seed that's good, good seed. The Bible says that which a man sows, that he will also reap or in our case, she. So that which a woman sows, that she will also reap. So let's sow good, beauty, love, kindness. Proverbs says it of the Proverbs 31 woman that the law of kindness is on her tongue. Let that be said of you. Oh man, she's got a kind tongue. The things that come out of her mouth are good. They're life giving. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So come on, join us. Be, be women of prayer. And if you're in the SoCal area on Friday, April 5th, Come and join us for Girls Night Out, where we're going to hang out and we're going to have real talk conversation about love, romance, relationships, everything in between. But I, I guarantee you, it will be a night of unforgettable fun and it's free and it's free. Okay. So how many of you are ready for our next guest? No, not even our next guest. How many of you are ready for our guest? I'm ready for our guest, not just our next guest. So she is incredible. Uh, we have had her as a guest on A New Thing Live before. And I'm going to read a little bit, an excerpt, a quick question that's going to bring her out on this stage. But the beginning of the back of her book says, have you ever felt God calling you to do something? Yet your fears and insecurities kept you from answering that call. And I'm going to ask this question again. Have you ever felt God calling you? to do something, yet your fears and insecurities kept you from answering that call. Well, I'm so thankful that this next guest did not allow her fears and insecurities keep her from answering the call. So would you please say welcome to our beautiful, beloved, anointed, talented, and very smart uh, and coaching guest, Katrina Iniguez. Hello, Miss Katrina. Welcome to A New Thing with Cindy. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm so good. I'm so good. It is so good to have you back. You know, you, you, you've been on, was it last year? Was it a year ago that you were on? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And you've been doing some things, girl. 
<laughs> yes, I would say God's got me pretty busy right now, but it's been such a joy and a blessing. <laughs> I love that. Well, we're excited. You know, we always like to talk about the new thing that God is doing in your life. And it's very evident, like, okay, so last year we were celebrating your obedience over fear, but now you've just recently released something else that we get to celebrate. So you've got some new, can, can you tell us all about it? And congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so May or sorry, March 22nd, this, I just got this in. So you guys are actually the first to see it. I haven't even shown my audience that I got this in yet. So oh, wow. this is um, the uh, proof for the study guide that came out with my book. I had a, a ladies that were asking, hey, they got my book. They loved it. Great feedback. And they're like, can you write a study for this? And so that was not my intention originally. And like I said, God's had me pretty busy doing other things. This was one of those. So I spent five months working on writing that and taking a group of ladies through that study. And now we are on the verge of um, publishing that on March 22nd. So I'm really excited about that. Um, a big part of that isn't even about the accomplishment for me. It's really about seeing the breakthrough that other people had in the study, but also that I know that others will have when they go through and they start applying the lessons that God taught me in that walk and that journey of obedience over fear, because there's so much that goes into giving God our yes, despite how we're feeling on the inside or the lies that we're believing about ourselves um, as well. And so I'm so excited for the breakthroughs that are going to come and the stories that I get to hear from that. Um, it just really, truly is a blessing um, to be able to have God use me in that way. That's so good. You are just very generous. You know, you're just such a person that likes to pour. That's your heart and your passion. And I feel like even part of your purpose is pouring into others, pouring into women, but also into others so that others can fulfill the call of God on their life. And so it's such a sacrificial path to take. <laughs> and it is a sacrificial, yes, but um, to me, it just warms my heart and it's very inspiring. And, you know, sometimes people might say, oh, you know, I don't see this, or I wish somebody would do something like this. And then you're saying, oh, I'm going to provide a solution for that situation. I think a lot of us are called to provide solutions for things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're just so busy looking at the lack and anybody can complain about it. But what I love about who you are and what you do is that you're saying, okay, yeah, there's a need. And now, Lord, how can I um, be used to meet that need. So, wow, that's, that's powerful. And thank you so much for being that person that says, yes, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's exciting, you know, in fact, just going back to your original, your book, obedience over fear, it's life outside of the comfort zone. You know, a lot of times people won't want to do things because of fear. You know, what if I fail? What if I, what is it going to look like? What are others going to think? I know for me, sometimes that's my thing is, is what are others going to think? And I just had to say, it doesn't even matter. The voice of what God is saying to me must be louder so that I can walk out in obedience to doing what he's called me to do and not care about what others are going to say, because people are going to say things anyway, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it and it has been a complete journey for me. I think last time I was on here, I sh I shared with you guys that the prayer that changed my life in 2017 was I told God, God, I'm tired of running from your plans and purposes of my life. I'm tired of not living up to what you created me to be. And um, I will give you my yes. I will say yes, even if I'm scared to do it, even if it's outside my comfort zone, even if I don't want to do it or it doesn't make sense, I'll say yes. And and that prayer completely transformed my life. And it hasn't been an easy journey. I'm not going to lie that it was all of a sudden I woke up and I was like, oh, this is easy to give God my yes. There was lots of arguing over the years, the Bible study, you know, that came out writing the book, all of that was arguments that I went through with God to give him my yes. But ultimately, despite all of that, because of my fears and insecurities, that's where the arguments were coming from. And I had to look at what the root causes were, which was much of what you just said. Who am I 
to be used by God? What will others think of me? You know, what if I fail? What if it doesn't have success? All of those thoughts went through my head Mm -hmm. and I just had to continue to press on and lean on his promises and the things that he was telling me and really root my identity in who he said I was because it's so easy to get caught up in the who the world says we are or what degree we should have or any of that, that we lose sight of who our creator created us to be. And so I've had to pull in scripture. I had to pull in accountability partners. I had to pull in people that were just going to push me and believe in me even when I didn't believe in myself. And I think that's one of the reasons it's so easy for me to see that in other people Mm -hmm. is because others saw it in me before I saw it in myself. And I can, I can believe that and I can cheer them on and and encourage them um, to continue to take those steps of obedience um, in in that process. Um, But it's a journey. I wasn't easy and it's still not easy. There's still more things that God will continue to do that he's growing me into that person. And Mm -hmm. I've had to continue to step outside of my comfort zone um, to give him that. Yes. Amen. I love that. I was recently producing a a conference out here in Orange County called the Essential Conference. And one of the things that the keynote speaker was, well, one of the things that she, she said many things that were so good. But one of the things that I love that she said, it just resonated with like, yeah, that's how I live my life. She said, we need to be uncomfortable. We need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'm like, that's it. I feel like my life is a life of uncomfortability. You mm-hmm. know, you're constantly doing things that are pushing yourself. And, you know, even in with your book, and I want to allude to uh, you know, several wonderful nuggets in here, but Um, You know, one of the things that you alluded to is like, you know, sometimes we don't want to trust. We want to lean on our own understanding. But you say here on page 93, we have to choose to be obedient and trust that he knows what's best. You know, it's like we will always want we'll always have a reason why not. And we don't know what God knows. You talk about the puzzles. You talk about the piece. He sees everything from beginning to end. But here we are in our own finite understanding saying, oh, but this, oh, but that. And I've asked the Lord, Lord, teach me to know when it's you and when I'm budding you, open my eyes to see that I am budding you. So usually by the second or the third, but God, I'll go, oh, okay your budding God, you know, because what do I know? I know nothing. (laughs) I know nothing. And, and I love this. You say here, if you feel prompted to do something and it scares you again, you're feeling uncomfortable. Oh, this is uncomfortable. I'm not used to this. I don't know what this feels like. I don't know what, what this looks like. I don't know what's on the other side of my yes. But if you feel prompted to do something and it scares you, Pay attention to it. So good. I think a lot of times people will hear something and because it scares them, that's it. They shut it down. People don't like to live outside of what's comfortable. Oh, and that is so, so true because, and and I was there. Um, I would, I'd hear things like that. And I've, oh, I've done a lot of reflection over the years of, after saying that prayer of like, okay, was this something that was in me as a child, as a teenager, as, you know, and, you know, I think that because of fear or because I thought what others thought about me, there were uh, things, example, songwriting, okay, or even singing where, you know, as a teen, somebody else got picked over me to lead a song. And I, it just stuck with me that I felt like, okay, I'm not a great singer. And that's not who God created me to be, but I think I just push anything else on singing and songwriting down from that. Um, And so there's a lot of reflection that goes into um, that whole, it scares me. And so I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm paralyzed because of it, or I'm just going to dismiss it. And that is oftentimes why I said in my book where we need to really pay attention to that because if it's not your thought and it's not a direction you would choose to go in my personal opinion i truly believe that is one of the ways god is speaking to us and saying hey this is what i want you to do so when it's not coming to us because it's like 
oh, I would love to just do public speaking and be on a stage. That was never a thought of mine. I'm not going to lie. Like that has always and still does terrify me. That said, that thought of God saying, I'm introducing you on a stage as a speaker, author, singer, songwriter terrified me. That would have never been my thought. And that's when I immediately went to and got an accountability partner to hold me to what God was asking me to step into. And, and so that's, that's why that comes from a very big part of stepping out and saying, this is not my thoughts. This is definitely God's. And do I have a choice at that point to make? Am I going to give God my yes and step into the unknown, get uncomfortable, overcome fears and insecurities? Or am I going to sit in my comfort zone and just go on with my life, but never fulfill mm -hmm. what God has really called me to do, or even the purpose of my life? And there's a scripture um, in, uh, oh my gosh, I just forgot it. Uh, I think it's Isaiah. I have, uh, let's see. I have my uh, Jeremiah 1, 5. Before you, let's see, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Yeah. I set you apart. And that, that scripture holds so true and something that I pull on when I'm starting to self-doubt and think about what others think of me. Like, no, God created me with intention and purpose. And one thing you'll hear me say a lot is you're valued, you lo you're loved, and you matter. And I truly believe that. And that comes from knowing that my identity is in him mm -hmm. and relying on scriptures like this when I start to self-doubt to get me to move forward. That's so good. I love that. And thank you so much for sharing that. You know, it's so interesting. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like one of the reasons why people don't move forward is because they don't feel valued. And they don't feel like they matter. They don't feel like their words matter. Maybe even their message. I know I have to fight that sometimes. It's like, you know, at 54 years old, I'll hear this little whisper saying, nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you know, and it's like, there's been times where I have like in tears pushed myself forward to do what I'm doing right now. And I'm like, that is a lie. This is what God put in my heart years ago since I was a little girl. And he has led me to doing this even today. So in Jesus name, I shut that lie in the name of Jesus. We have to rise up with our mouth. Otherwise, it literally we will be bullied by the enemy into a corner, allowing us to be feel the fear and to be intimidated and to allow when you allow those lies to continue to bombard you and come at you every which way. And we're not speaking the word of God out. We don't have that accountability. You talked about that accountability. That's huge. Having someone that, to hold you accountable to doing it. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things I love about who you are. You know, you're a coach, you know, you train people. It's like coaching is important. If you feel like I can't do this without a coach, then by all means, get a coach, get yeah. that person who's going to be in your corner saying, come on, you can do this. You got this, you know, and, you know, in your book, and I want to talk a little bit about the workbook as well, but in your book, yeah. you talk about how like, you're not going to go out all of a sudden, God's not going to put you out in front of 10,000, 100,000 people. No, he does it in increments. And I, I think you and I can both look back at, and see how he has brought us through, you know, speaking, you know, when I was younger to smaller crowds and now the crowds have grown. And, and you, yes, there's always that sense of, um, like with fear and trepidation, because you want to be sure that you're bringing this word that's, you know, truly from God and it's going to empower. Is this the right word? Am I going to deliver it the right way? And you don't want to mishandle the word of God, but it's a different kind of nervous. Now it's still, again, you step into that grace mm -hmm. that he's given you, but you, you have to go from glory to glory. And, and I always remember, and somebody just mentioned it again this past week, but I've always loved that whole idea. Lord, what do you have next for me? And I've always said, if you're not, if, if he's silent, it's because he needs you to do the last thing he asked you to do. He's mm -hmm. not going to give you the next until, and it would be like that in, in the natural if we're walking and we're, you know, to go from here to get to there, I have to take the steps in between here to get to over there. If I don't take the steps, so what am I doing? I'm just stuck and I'm standing. I stay standing right here. No, mm -hmm. I need to take the next step to get to that other 
to get to be able to get to the point that I want to get to. And so, um, and so leading me now to the, to your book, your, to the workbook, you know, I love that because now you're giving the individual the opportunity to apply and to reflect, to write, to journal. I haven't seen it yet because it's not released yet, but I just know that this is, you know, um, this is what your workbook is going to have you do the work. Yeah. Which it just so, and I always tell people, you have to be willing to do the work. I love that. So, um, and there's, um, oh, go ahead. No, 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 I was just going to say, it's going to be available though. In, in March, you said March 22nd, March 22nd. Okay. Wonderful. So go yeah. ahead. Uh, so yeah, in that, in that study guide, I use, um, part of that personal study time is that you have weekly overcoming fears, action challenges. Ooh. And these are definitely, and God grew me as I wrote this, I was like, okay, well, I have to also do these things because I'm facilitating this life group on, you know, this study as I was writing it. And, uh, God grew me in those moments, but we're only going to grow if we're willing to do that work. So going through a study, um, and that's why I believe that if we do the work, we're going to see transformation, we're going to see breakthrough. Um, and the study is really designed for that. Um, not only those deeper dive lessons, but also to overcome those fears and insecurities uh, that we have so that we can move forward um, in that obedience and do the things that scares us. One of the things I actually repeat twice in there is writing out a list of your um, top 100 fears. Now that sounds like a lot, but I want little fears and big fears, not just you know, these little tiny things or, oh, I'm terrified to swim with sharks, but what are, you know, what are some of those? And that is a fear of mine. Uh, but what are some <laughs> of those uh, fears that you have? Is it public speaking? Is it, you know, I'm scared to sleep with my foot uncovered at night, like mm -hmm. little things because God can teach us as we start overcoming those. And then later on in the study, I come back to it. I'm like, if you haven't overcome those top be overcome those top fears that you chose in the beginning. Let's, what do we need to do? And if you did, let's celebrate and then let's pick the next things. The other thing in there that I talk about, um, and there's several challenges in there. It's a 16 week study. Um, so there's, there's lots of challenges, but one of the things is what are the lies that you are believing mm -hmm. enemy is saying about you? And then to go and find scripture Yes. to support that and to defeat the lies. Like you were just mentioning, you know, you have to speak that word and speak that truth and say, no, that that's the lies the enemy is saying, and I don't have to believe it. And we need to squash it. Right. And scripture is a great tool to be able to overcome that and stop believing those lies. And the study will help with that as, as we take you through that. And there's always every week there's what does in that overcoming fears challenge, Find scripture that, yeah. that, 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 whatever that challenge is, find scripture that, you know, um, so that you're yeah. speaking truth over your life instead of speaking death over your life. That's so good. You know, and that's exactly what Jesus did in the wilderness. You know, every time he was tempted by the devil, he would say it is written. Mm -hmm. He would quote scripture. And so I always tell people if it was if it was good enough for Jesus and if Jesus had to do it, we have to do it as well. You know, and very similar, you know, in, in our book, the same thing at the very end, we have these re reversing, reversing the lie with the truth of God's word. What does God's word say about you? I know that for me, when I started doing the work from trauma and things that had happened to me since I was a little girl, all the way up until my late forties, I had to go identify the lie once I identified the lie and uh, even reflecting how it was causing me to behave and act because I believed that lie. Now we need to dismantle. Do you realize that it is a lie? Yes. We need to dismantle the lie now. And the only way really to do that is through with scripture, with God's word. It's not even a pot. It's to me, it's more than just, oh, positive affirmation. No, <laughs> like. Right. 
you know, yes, I'm sure if you say something a thousand times, you can believe it. But there's something about the living word of God that when we speak it, that's what becomes truth. And to the point where it, it can even explode in your heart to like nothing else could even compare now. Because now that you know that you know it's not a here, it's not a head knowledge, but it's a knowing. Oh, mm -hmm. no, this is who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. It doesn't matter what you're telling me, you know, uh, enemy. It doesn't matter what you're saying. This is who I know me to be because of what God's word says about me. So I love that you build up the reader in that. And I love that you're applying and causing them to do the work to dig a little bit deeper so that they're they're thinking th things through and that they, their thoughts and their emotions and all the are starting to come in alignment really with who they really are. Mm -hmm. Like what you said, they are valued and they are loved and they do matter. So that's, that's so beautiful. You know, this being a uh, national women's history month, you know, who are some of the icons or even now, you know, who are some of the women that you would say, that uh, you just really look to and say, you know, I look to these women because of who they are and, and, and how they've impacted my life. Because you're clearly impacting the lives of others. Who are some that have impacted you? Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I looked back and I was thinking on this and I was like, I don't know if it's somebody in like media or somebody that's like, a well-known historical figure. I mean, as a kid, there were women that inspired me. Um, uh, uh, Erickson Tata, what, Joan, Joni Erickson Tata, which I know she's relatively, she has a foundation here close to me. Okay. Um, and uh, I just love the fact that she was a quadriplegic and, mm -hmm. you know, still did not let that stop her from doing great things as a young person. And now she's with her foundation. She is doing some amazing things for those with disabilities. And it's just, it's beautiful to see that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was as a young child, but then also I, I can't help but just look back at like the life I've had and who I am today because of my mom. Mm -hmm. um, my mom has really set that example. And I think a big part of who I am is because of the example that she set, not only with the true demonstration of grace, for so many other people, you know, she just always extended grace, which is often a hard thing for so many of us to do. Yeah. And she seemed to do it so effortlessly. Now she might say it wasn't effortlessly, but she made it appear effortlessly. And then she just had this childlike faith always and mm -hmm. to believe that God cared about the littlest of prayers to the biggest of prayers. And really instilled that in me, even when I didn't realize she was instilling that into me as a child, I recognize it now as an adult. Um, and then just really focusing on the good that God's in complete control of everything and to just fully have trust um, with him. Like I grew up in and out of the hospital a lot as a kid. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she always made it so that I we weren't focused on the negative and the circumstances. We were always focused on the joy of the Lord, the good in it. We would laugh. Um, sometimes doctors thought we were crazy because we were having fun in serious situations. And it was just really, you know, just trusting that God had me in the palm of his hand and he was in control of that, that I still apply those lessons to my life today that when I'm faced with big circumstances, you know, it doesn't phase me as much emotionally, you know, I don't get as much anxiety or fear um, around. And I think a lot of that comes to do from my mother and just demonstrating her faith in God. I love that. And then just to see from generation to generation, how now you're walking out probably so much like what you're saying, who you are because of the things that she instilled in you. And now it, it didn't just stop there. See, this is what I love about this is now it's, it's become a part of your mom's legacy, your book, your obedience over fear, the new workbook being released March 22nd. That to me is even a part of your mom's legacy and who she was to you and what she instilled in you. And now you're, you're championing others 
to also have that same positive outlook in life and you're championing others to say, come on, you can do this. You mm -hmm. can do this. You have what it takes. Let's do the work together. And you're not just saying, oh, come on, man up, you know, just get it. You know, <laughs> there's that side of you that is a very caring and sympathetic and, and you're saying, come on, like, I'm providing something for you, for you to be able to come up and, and do what you're supposed to do, what you've been called to do, do what you've been created, what you've been gifted to do. I know I love sharing that scripture, Jeremiah 1, you know, with with the ones that I, the young ones that I mentor, because especially in today's day and age, I think sometimes some of the, the messages are so loud and so confusing, you know, I, and this is not for this topic, so we really won't go there, but um, I, I try to remind them, this is what God's word says about you. You are called, you are set apart. Even when you were in your mother's womb, yet unformed, God already knew you. Mm -hmm. So just continue to lean into that and say, Lord, what have you called me to do? Who am I? Who am I? Who did you design and fashion and create me to be? And I think if we encouraged our kids to do that, we wouldn't see all the mental health issues that we see today. Yes, it would still be a thing, but I feel like it's so prevalent in part because of all the confusing um, messages that we are sending to these kids. It's like they're not even able to grow up the way that we did growing up. Mm -hmm. But I was just allowed to be a kid. Like yeah. I just was allowed to be me and in all my, I guess, did I have a tomboy season? I absolutely did. Did one, there was even one season, Katrina, I had my hair cut like a boy, not because I identified with the boy, but because I was so in love with Michael Jackson that I wanted to look just like him. So I begged my mom, please, please cut my hair. I want an Afro like Michael Jack. I want to and she just didn't want to do it. I had cute curly hair. You know, my hair was mixed and it was just so cute and curly. And I said, oh, please cut my hair like Michael Jackson. please." So she finally did. And she had to go get all. They said, you need to buy a pick. You need to pick, you know, so she was doing all these things. They didn't have moose back in the day either. <laughs> And then I loved my hair and I loved my look until I heard somebody tell my mom, you have the cutest little boy. I cried. Oh. <laughs> I cried. I cried so hard. I said, mom, please. I want my hair to grow back, you know, but just allowing me to be a kid, mm -hmm. allowing me to be a kid. I wasn't identifying to a boy. Because I had a boy haircut, I was identifying to the love that I had for Michael. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. and so I just feel like some of the messages that come now at these kids are so hardcore. So it's what I love about you sharing Jer Jeremiah 1. Um, you know, and then, and I know recently we were talking just about those still small voices. You know, we talked a little bit about it here. Like if God is speaking to you to, you know, listen to it, you know, Pay attention to that. And I'll, just in that same line, we were talking recently about, you know, when God speaks to sometimes it's not in that loud and that obvious, but sometimes it is in that still small voice. Can you talk a little bit about the power of heeding the still small voice that is the Lord? Yeah. So many people ask me all the time, like, well, how do you know it's God speaking to you? And a lot of times it is a sense of peace. Sometimes I hear things, sometimes it comes up in scripture or in a message on a Sunday or things like that. But going back to something um, you and I said earlier about paying attention when it doesn't make sense um, to us, that's often when it's God speaking to us. So just recently, I actually, this is a funny story. I'll try to keep it a little shorter, but give you context uh, just on how important it is to pay attention to the little things that don't make any sense to you and trusting that it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I was at a uh, conference back in October and um, I went to get food. I was with my brother and his wife and I paid for my food and went over and I got, you know, silverware and he was behind me getting ready to pay for his food. And I grabbed my fork and I started to walk and napkins and I started to walk away. And as I walked, started to walk away, I heard, get a second fork. 
And I was like, kind of like, wait, where'd that thought come from? It like really kind of took me back for a second. You know, and this all happens pretty quickly. Um, and I was like, I don't need a second fork. Why would I get a second fork? Um, I, it's not like I'm going to drop my fork on the floor or anything. Maybe I will. I don't know. And I dismissed it and I started to walk away again. And I heard get a second fork. And this time it was a little louder, still quiet, just more or less like a, a thought in my head. Right. Um, and I was like, fine, maybe I'm going to get back to the conference and somebody's not going to have had dinner and I'm going to be able to give them a fork that's not used by me and they can eat and share their food with me. Right. I'm trying to figure it all out. I'm trying to figure it all out. Like it doesn't make sense to me why I need a second fork. And so to get my food, you know, my brother and I, we head out to the car. My sister-in-law is driving. We're trying to like rush to get our food eaten because we have a very sh uh, short dinner break that because we went over. And so I grab my fork out of the bag and I scoop up food and I go to take a bite. And my brother goes, ah, they didn't put a fork in the bag. Now, how am I supposed to eat my food? And I said, because God told me to get a second fork and I handed him my fork. Um, and so, you know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense sometimes. Yeah. And it's those quiet voices that when it's not our own thought mm -hmm. and it's not something that we would have, we would have even like said out loud, we would have even considered or dreamed about. Oftentimes it is the things that we really need to pay attention to. And I can't tell you, God's been teaching me in this season right now to really listen to those little still quiet voices. I can give you countless stories of yeah. times like that, that I listened and times that I didn't listen. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's just like, oh, when I don't listen now, I'm like, oh, ouch, man. Like that would have been such a blessing to me or that would have been a blessing to somebody else had I listened to that yes. and been able to, um, to bless somebody else because of it. Like I was able to bless my brother in some silly little thing by giving him a fork. So he didn't have to eat it with his hand, you know, yeah. <laughs> or share my dirty fork. I mean, we're siblings, but I'm sure he didn't want to share my fork after I was done eating in either. So <laughs> I love that. It's so good. And, and you're right. I can tell you so many times where, where the Lord was saying something to me and I, from small to huge where I, didn't listen. And, you know, and then there are the times where you do listen. And then later on you go, Oh, that's why you said to bring my coat because yeah. I was going to be cold and now it's in my cart, you know, or whatever. Um, in, in so many different instances from the smallest practical, but to some things that are very, very big. So, you know, yes, I just want to, to agree and just to reaffirm and to reiterate the power of listening to that still small voice yeah. and going back to, you know, what has God purposed you to do? What has God called you to do? And if you see that, if you sense that, if you feel that, and even if you're not walking in it yet, then heed, like let's heed and say, okay, I feel like you're saying this. And I love that you say, you know, pray about it pray about it and ask God and he will confirm. And even for me recently, there's been some, some things that he's been showing me. And I said, Lord, I need you to confirm to me. And I'm telling you, he confirmed in every way from a dream. I don't even remember my dreams, but this dream I remembered so vivid and it gave me instruction um, to seeing a t-shirt with the answer that I had been praying that I knew that I knew because I said, is it this Lord? And then Within an hour, I'm seeing this T-shirt to in the word, the word, him confirming through the word of God, through a message, through a teaching. And, you know, it, it's, it's going to look different because he's a God of variety. Remember with Moses, it was like one time he said uh, to strike the rock and another time he said to speak to it, you know. And so he's a God of variety. And sometimes we want to get ahead and we want to think that we know, but we don't know. Yeah. We don't See what God sees. In fact, the word says that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His ways are much higher. His thoughts are much higher. And we've talked and, you know, kind of chuckled how oh, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, it is the Lord's plan that stands. So I'm so thankful um, to him for you 
And I'm so thankful for you and and you saying your yes, because so many will be blessed, will be strengthened. So many will be walking out who God has called them to be as a result of your yes. And as a result of you being obedient in spite of fear. Um, Is there anything else that you would want to share before we before we wrap this time up and i feel like i've told you before we could just keep talking i know this we could yeah we we really could um well there's one scripture that comes to mind that's really been a big part of everything and again why i'm able to walk out that obedience and give god my yes there's actually a few um but one of them is esther 414 which says, uh, you know, what if I've come to this royal position or what if you've come to this royal position for such a time as this, right? God is constantly calling us, whether you call it a calling, I like to call them assignments, most of your callings, I like to call them assignments. Um, And I love that because, you know, there are things that God has asked me to do. It's just a one quick answer. It's not like this long lifetime of a calling, right? So there's so many times that we can respond and give God our yes. It's not just about fulfilling the big purpose, but you know, he is asking you, what if I brought you to this position? Maybe he took you on a trip. I just recently in October, also prior to that conference, I was actually attending another conference and I drove to Texas from California And I had no time date that I was actually going to be back. And I left on that trip and said bye to my husband with no expected date of return because I felt like God was just saying, just trust me and go and don't make a plan. Mm -hmm. And for a planner as myself and an OCD and likes to have all of the details, a type personality, (laughs) it was so hard to get in my car and not know when I was coming back to my family. (laughs) Like I don't, I I travel a lot and I don't know as if I ever have cried so much leaving as I did on that Mm -hmm. trip because God was saying, just trust me and go and I will show you where you need to go. And I'm telling my daughter, my youngest daughter at the time we have one left at home and my husband, bye, but I don't know when I'm going to see you next. And I trusted and, you know, I went to my conference and then it was that next day that he showed me where I needed to be. And then I was like, okay, I still don't know when I was going to be home. And then he led me to another spot in Texas and I didn't really know why I was there. I was just guessing. I had all of my guesses as to why I was there and it ended up being nothing like that. I had gone into this hotel and I was getting ready to leave. And I felt like God was saying, head back, you know, to start heading back home. And I ran into the person at the reception uh, at the check-in desk. And I um, said, bye, I'm checking out. I sat in the lobby. I got into my car and God said, go back in and share this with her. And I was like, why? She's going to think I'm crazy. I'm not going to go back in and share this with her. Like, who am I? Like, what? (laughs) <laughs> and I sat in my car and argued with God for like five minutes before I went back in. And when, as I started sharing this with her, I said, I don't even know why I'm sharing this with you. I don't even know why I even came here. I said, but God called me here mm-hmm. and I just had to respond. Yes. So part of my journey is giving him my yes. And she said, oh my gosh, thank you so much for sharing my that story. I needed that encouragement because mm-hmm. God called me here to this city And I had to go against everything everybody told me, but I now know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And as soon as I shared that with her and she shared back with me, God just gave me a complete peace that I can go home. It was one encounter, one encounter. I drove a 4,000 mile round trip trip for one encounter. Yes. That's where it's so important that we don't have to have all of the details. We don't even have to know what it's going to be like as long as we're willing to give God our yes and let him work through us to minister to other people. Because I don't know what she was facing, Mm -hmm. but she needed that encouragement. And it took my yes of going there and being there to share and encourage her and uplift her. And that's why it's so important. I I, in the end of my book, I close it out with this statement. I said, I will leave you with one final thought. What if someone else's prayer answer is on the other side of your obedience? 
Yes. Will you choose obedience to God's call or your fears and insecurities? Mm. So good. Such a powerful question. And what a powerful way to end your book. And what a powerful way to even end this this time together is, is that very thing. Um, again, you're saying if you will leave us with one final thought. What if someone else's prayers answer is on the other side of our obedience? Or maybe those of you watching is on the other side of your obedience. So what if you're the answer to somebody's prayer, but you have to obey in order for that prayer to be answered? And then you need to obey God and the call of God over the fears and and obey him in spite of the fear. And so, Katrina, would you pray for those that are watching? There might even be some who don't even know th the Lord. And But would you still just pray? Because I believe everybody watching is watching for a reason. There is a purpose. And, um, and I love the part of assignments. It's like, you know, when you're... When you're in grade school, you go through assignments and it's several assignments that help you to complete one grade mm -hmm. and then you advance to the next grade. And so maybe for someone watching, it's just an assignment that the Lord is asking them to do. They don't fully understand, but I would love it if you could close us out in prayer if you're okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for this opportunity um, to gather together here to be able to um, speak to Cindy's audience, Father God, and, and be of encouragement, especially um, in Women History Month, Father God, that we can champion on other women. Let this uh, time together be an inspiration to others to just have that boldness uh, to step out. You say in Joshua 1, 9, you said, have I not commanded you mm. to be bold and courageous, Lord? You are asking us, over and over again through scripture to give you our yes. And I just pray that no matter where we are in our walk, Lord, you just help us to take that next level, that next assignment, and to pay attention to those still, quiet, small voices that don't make any sense to us or might even scare us to death, Lord, that you use those. You speak to our heart. You help us squash the lies of the enemy by digging into your word, Father, for your promised scriptures. And I just ask that we have a heart um, that says in Isaiah, where you say, um, whom shall I send? And we have a heart posture that says, here I am, Lord, send me. Let that be our prayer. Let that be um, our yes to you so that we can be used by you, that we can be the answer to somebody else's prayers and be a blessing to others, encouraging them, building them up. And just really um, fulfilling your kingdom, your will be done here on earth. We praise you and thank you for this time together. And we ask that you have your hedge of protection around each of us as we go about our days. In Jesus' yeah. name, amen. 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 Well, Katrina, thank you so, so much. As always, a huge joy having you on. And I just want to be sure to share your information, your website, where if anybody is interested in any additional information or contacting you or emailing you, but it's whykatrina.life. Her website is whykatrina.life. And please, if you're in need of coaching, if you have any more questions about her book, um, we didn't even talk about the fact that she's also a trainer physical trainer as well <laughs> over 20 years talents and many hats what was that katrina i said over 20 years now in the health and wellness industry and that's why you know when you when you when we were talking not too long ago and you're saying oh you know four kids and two grandkids i said girl nobody would ever believe that because you look so young thank you <laughs> thank you i'll I take that, that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, we definitely will be on the lookout for your book on Amazon March yeah. 22nd. Now, if you want the actual book, you can go ahead and head on over to Amazon as well. But her workbook that coincides with this uh, will be released on March 22nd on Amazon. And listen, some of you might have been saying, you know, I need a study group. I need a group. Maybe you're the one that's supposed to lead it. 
Maybe, maybe you're having this restlessness because you're the one that needs to launch a study group. And maybe with her workbook and the book, you're going to be able to launch and lead others into victory and into breakthrough and into like what even Katrina was saying, just that, that um, courage to say yes to that thing that God is asking you to do. And so Katrina, you're just such a gift and what an honor to have you with us for National Women's Month. You are a champion of women and I just pray the bless, the best for you and the blessings of God over you and all that you continue to do. Thank you for blessing us with your presence on this show today. Thank you for having me, Cindy. Such a blessing. You're you're very welcome. So thank you, everybody. Say thank you to Katrina. And then we also thank you guys so much for joining us. Again, all of her information, it will be on the links in this particular podcast. So you can just click on that link for her website. You can click on the link for the book that's currently available. And also it's in the description as well. So we love you guys. Let's let's look at fear and let's just say we're done. Like fear, you're not you're not grabbing a hold of me for 2024. Like we're knocking we're knocking it out. We're canceling fear. <laughs> okay. In Jesus' name. And then we're also here for you as well. If you guys have any prayer requests, please do email us at an uh, email at at a new thing dot live at gmail.com. But we pray for you. We believe in you. God has wonderful things in store for you. And we will see you next time on a new thing. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye.